Folks, welcome back to AP Unfiltered. In this episode, I want to talk about something. People have been asking me to give my opinion on the Trump verdict, and I figured that the best way to do so would be reviewing a video that so perfectly encapsulates the arguments as well as the emotionality from the left. So buckle up. It's going to be a wild one. My man Prager, and this is AP Unfiltered. People have responded in many ways since the Trump verdict came down. Many people rushing to his defense, stating the fact that it was rigged and that there was no way he was going to get a fair one in New York City. And the other side claiming that this was just a simple execution of our judicial system in a perfect way. So Piers Morgan had on a panel to discuss and let's get into it and I'll check in with my thoughts throughout seem to care. And so this has been a ratcheting up, as we've all noted on the panel, of trends that have been built up for some years now. Some would say going back to Richard Nixon. But certainly in the early Trump campaign, the Democrats tried to stop him from being president by spying on him and cooking up fake intelligence, ironically enough, with Russia. And that didn't work. Then they tried to throw him out by impeaching him twice. That didn't work. Then they tried to kick him out by rigging the election and changing all the voter rules, in some cases, in contravention of state constitutions leading up to that election that did get him out of office and he did leave office but then he didn't go away he kept running again so then they indicted him four times now they've convicted him they're going to threaten to throw him in prison pretty soon they're going to threaten to send him to saint helena but this has absolutely nothing to do with the law as was noted earlier at most you're talking about a, a misdemeanor that would have already expired under the statute of limitations i'm not even convinced that there was really a misdemeanor that trump committed so my fellow panelist here is celebrating that that the rule of law has has been vindicated and overturned 234 years of American legal tradition, I would challenge her to see if she could possibly articulate how and what crime Trump committed, because so far Alvin Bragg, the DA, has failed to do so. The, the judge in the case, Judge Marchand, has failed to do so, and they can't do it because Trump didn't commit any of the crimes for which he's been convicted. So to kick this off, Michael Knowles rightfully points out the fact that ever since Trump was elected in 2016, and even maybe a little bit before that, the left has done everything in their power to get him out of office or to hinder his ability to conduct business while he was our president. Even when he left in 2020, it did not stop there. The indictments, they get the conviction, and it doesn't seem that they're slowing down whatsoever in their seemingly nonstop pursuit to jail Donald J. Trump and prevent him from occupying the Oval Office again in 2024. Time and time again, it has been proven that what they had gone after him for has not been true. And the left has done almost everything in their power to cover up the things that could have hurt their own candidates simultaneously. This is evidenced with the Hillary Clinton scandal, the Hunter Biden laptop story that was systematically suppressed from people being able to even share it through their social media, and the list goes on. The Democrats at every turn claim they have to take out Donald Trump to protect democracy while simultaneously crapping all over democracy. Interestingly enough, this is called gaslighting, ladies and gentlemen, and this next part, of it, in my opinion, perfectly encapsulates the left. Take a look. But folks, before we get into it, check out our amazing sponsor, PatriotCigarCompany.com. Great cigars, great business, run by the name of Better Patriot. Pick some up for yourself for some loved ones, and if you don't smoke yourself, pick some up for, for a deployed service member at a deep, deep discount. When you head to checkout, be sure you're using promo code APU for 25% off. And folks, if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, and the sub button if you're over on YouTube, and share the show with a friend. Let's get back into it. Well, let's just ask quickly, before we go to Kevin, Francesca, just on that point, what crime did Trump commit? He, it was it was camp it was financial crimes it was white collar crimes it was it, what that was is it? exactly Which what one, they though? charged him it was he was convicted on what was the crime it's New York State law I understand it, what's the, it, what was the crime it is New Francesca I got I, I don't even like it, it is well, literally, hang on, hang on, he just got convicted on thirty four counts Francesca what of, was the of, crime of, act, of like cooking the actual books what was the crime you are not allowed so you are not allowed to to use your own financial, like your own money to pay off somebody. And then he wrote, he, he logged it as something different. He logged it as just a regular payment, but he was actually paying off his porn star to keep quiet, which if he hadn't been running for president would not have mattered, but he was. And so it impacted campaign finance laws in New York state. Okay, that is what Juan Merchan just oversaw this. Okay. Alvin Bragg okay. brought these charges that's, because that's Michael not, Cohen and Sixer was happened. already okay. sentenced okay. to three years okay. to do it. First off, ladies and gentlemen, he was, it was never proven that that was the case. It was never proven to do so. It's not illegal to give 
hush money payments. An NDA is a common business practice, and I'm sure a lot of other people are saying that. I just feel like I have to state that as well. But she's unable to actually state what law was broken beyond a shred of a doubt, right? The whole process is predicated around being proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And this is the most clear cut case I've seen in such a long time of reasonable doubt all over the place because there was never the specific law brought to public that was broken. It was all conjecture and it was very thinly veiled at that. And this has been the play from the very, very beginning. Get Trump at all costs. Alvin Bragg even ran on the platform of, quote, I will get Donald Trump, end quote. That is a direct verbatim quote from his campaign. This is a perfect case of show me the man and I will give you the crime. Okay? And that's never how our justice system has worked in America. It's innocent until proven guilty. Innocent until proven guilty. It has always been that. The left says he was convicted by a jury of his peers, right? Because innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. But first off, let's look at the circumstances surrounding this. He's a former president. No one is really his peer. So a jury of your peers, I would make the case nobody is really his peer. Second, how does he get a fair trial in New York State, let alone a district that I believe was only around 6% that voted for him? Okay. Now, those two alone, interestingly enough, but number three, how do you get an unbiased jury for someone who is as well known as Donald Trump? Everybody has an opinion of him. So you put all of these things together and it leads to what people are now calling an unfair trial. I don't understand why people are like, oh, and it's so interesting because on the back end now, I hear people say, if you call it an unfair trial, Joe Biden, I think, said this. If you call it an unfair trial, it's a danger to democracy. But I find it amazing that people will go on a show like this, like on Piers Morgan, how this lady Francesca is on Piers Morgan and is not able to answer the simple question seemingly that they are so happy he was convicted of. It's astonishing. Let's just go before Kevin. I'd be very, very, very patient. But I will I'm come no, to you. Look, I'm no expert. Let me just say, hang on. No, no, Michael, Francesca, you are no expert. That's right. Because the campaign finance wait, wait, law is a federal wait. law. Hang on, anyway, Francesca. Yeah. I want to go to Mark. You're the lawyer. Is there anything Francesca just said? Is that actually the crime? Look, let me just say, I like Francesca a lot. I was, and we probably agree on 80% of our worldviews. However, Francesca, that that what the way you just described it call me afterwards and i'll educate you because that's not what happened there was no theory that was given to the to the jurors the jurors were told it could have been campaign finance it could have been tax it could have been false books they were told they didn't have to specify and specifically told they did not have to agree unanimously that's what irks me lifelong democrat no fan of trump never voted for trump never will but i will tell you as somebody who has spent his entire career kind of taking on unpopular causes and holding the government accountable um i have to tell you i do that for a reason and it, the reason is this kind of shenanigans and that's the best light i can spin it on in, in the criminal courts has no place in a federal election no the, I agree. the campaign finance but, laws but, but, were federal not state and the state laws had nothing okay to do i want to go now credit where it's due i at least feel like this guy is being fair he points out a scary fact that the system is essentially being upended in order to get one man. In law, a lot of things are set because of precedent, right? What has happened in the past? Well, you know, there's precedent. Use that for the future. And I think this is a scary one that has just been set, not just for politicians or people in the government, but for everyday Americans. He just said himself that he didn't vote for Trump and he would never vote for Trump, but yet he's able to realize the sham that had just taken place and the danger that it poses. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand this, folks. And I wholeheartedly agree. We're now living in a world where depending on where they hold your trial and depending on your politics, we have it will have a heavy, heavy uh, uh, weighing on your verdict. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If Donald Trump was in Mississippi, he gets acquitted. If he's tried in Chicago, he gets convicted. If he's tried in Los Angeles, he gets convicted. And if he's tried basically anywhere in West Virginia, he gets acquitted. See, a bigger precedent is being set, in my opinion, which is literal drawing of state battle lines based on political ideology, okay? That's not a place we want to be in, folks, and the left is hurling us there at absolute light speed. And now let's bring this home. Stick around. You're going to want to see this. You know, I, I don't mean to pick on Francesca too much here, but it's a very telling that even the liberals who are going on television to defend this ruling 
have to Google in the breaks to figure out what the crime was. <laughs> and and even then, I'm sorry to say, misrepresent what, what the actual supposed crime was. The, the I reason know, here that this has to take... literally not well, excuse my... Excuse me one second, it's, Francesca. It's, I'll just finish my point real quickly. Books. That's but, the same thing. Yeah. Not, it's not, yeah, it's not a felony, not a crime, but anyway, that's a, a point for another time. The reason why even the great Happy defenders pride. of this conviction pride, can't... Uh, <laughs> to you as well. Uh, the reason that they, they can't articulate this is because it's not really a crime. That's why they had to upend 234 years of precedent for this. And it gets back to a point that you made earlier, Piers, and, and that you made, Kevin, which is that Alvin Bragg really overplayed his hand. Sure, he, he over, overplayed his hand to some degree, but what else were they going to do? Mm -hmm. Donald Trump was always going to be the Republican nominee in 2024. The, a lot of people feel that he was gypped in 2020. He's the biggest guy in the party. It was going to happen. And Trump poses a real threat to the liberal establishment. He's not a Mitt Romney type Republican. He has different views from the so-called uniparty on things like trade, on things like immigration, and things like foreign policy and war. Uh, Trump posed a major threat. That's why they took such extraordinary measures for the last eight years to take this guy out. They weren't able to do it politically. They weren't even really able to do it at the ballot box. So what, what's left? The only thing left to do is to try to throw him in prison so that he can't campaign for the election. I agree, it's backfiring. This is not a federal it, case, Michael. You know that. It's not even a federal case. Why do you think that? It's not a DOJ case. It's not a Biden case. It's not a Merrick Garland thing. It's New York state law. So the idea that this is somehow politically motivated is all Biden made up is in your also, head because what you Biden's do DOJ is on also your show every Donald day twice. is you <laughs> groom your audience for fascism and you set them up <laughs> for a complete takeover of the DOJ. This is all about allowing Trump to get away with any crime he wants as you sort of slighted and, and sort of, you know, laid out very like nonchalantly just a little bit ago. He was impeached twice. Doesn't really matter that he tried to blackmail the leader of Ukraine into digging up non-existent dirt on Joe Biden. But that doesn't matter to you Joe or Biden your followers. To withhold arms. You want to make <laughs> sure. And I'm going to cut away from it there. Something interesting to point out, too, is throughout this entire s s interview that's been taking place, Whenever it suits their agenda, they will either call it federal or they will call it a state. But simultaneously on the back end of it, they didn't air the trial because it's a federal case. Interesting. I, 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 I find that to be kind of because now that all the chickens are coming home to roost, per se, in, the, in, in this in this discussion, they're like, OK, now we got we have to double down that it was a state case, state case, state case, state case. But there's evidence rife all over the place that says that the Biden administration has had their hands in this from every single angle, okay? And my, meanwhile, now to touch on, on what she said in this heated exchange between the two, I could have predicted this a mile away. After she was unable to claim the exact crime that Donald Trump had committed, and she was called out for that, she launches into this diatribe of leftist buzzwords and fear-mongering, okay? Donald Trump is going to overthrow the DOJ and do all of these different things, when in reality, it's actually the left who has co-opted the DOJ. This is a great example with this case and has prosecuted Donald Trump to the fullest extent of their abilities. And one can make the case they've gone farther than what is actually legal. I'm not a lawyer myself, but I've heard some compelling evidence. You have to remember, folks, because it doesn't matter. All that matters to the left is orange man, bad, bad orange man, let's get him. And that's all that's ever mattered to them. They mentioned Mitt Romney and I got to say something about this real quick. Mitt Romney is the most milk toast of the Republican Party that I've ever seen in my entire life and basically one step away from a Democrat. They hold him up as the beacon of the Republican Party, okay? But Donald Trump is not this. He's not this at all. And I fully believe that the reason why we are seeing such a backlash against Donald Trump and from 2015 in 2016 is that he is the first Republican president in history to stray away from the path of the Uniparty, the path of the establishment. And what's an earmark of every authoritarian government, you might ask? Destruction of their political opponents, just, just the cherry on top of everything. Pick a dictatorship and you'll see examples of this. And like I mentioned before, the level of gaslighting has reached an all-time high. The left says they have to destroy their political opponents to prevent the destruction of political opponents? All while telling the American people that they're protecting their democracy? That's what every communist dictatorship has done on its rise to power. And I'll throw this in as well. Every fascist dictatorship has done this as well. And what happens next after these people achieve their goal? Every group that is pro every group that has promised salvation obliterates the societal norms in the process and ends up becoming worse than anything previously. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the fight we face. And we have to live in reality, folks. We, can, we cannot afford to bury our heads in the sand anymore. We cannot live in blissful ignorance 
any longer. But folks, I appreciate you guys being here. If you enjoyed this type of content and you want to see more like this, do me a favor real quick. Hit the like button on the video, the follow button on the channel, the sub button if you're over on YouTube, share the show with a friend, take the URL, post it to the social medias. All of my links to all the different social medias are in the description of the video. So if you're not following me on any other platform and you're just following on one, I appreciate you doing that. Check out the other ones. It's absolutely free to you. It means everything to me. Drop a follow, drop a like, drop a comment because, you know, engagement, especially over on YouTube. And until next time, staying informed is an American immoral obligation. Catch y'all on the next one.